All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So today we are finally going to be talking about all of the circuit incarnans and my grades for them. And the incarnans explained page is now up on the site. So if you go to rosime.com, you can follow along there. Uh, the link to the exact page should be in the description. But if you just search for the incarnans explained or the incarnans page, it will pop up. Uh, so today this page is now done this is basically just like an explanation of like how the evolution numbers work and all of that good business how to get the incarnate adapters a small note on the other uh incarnates the original incarnates if you would um there's a small page on the zaramon right now this page is still under construction there's going to be you know a bunch of farming guides and stuff here eventually but for right now a small little incarnates uh, of the Zaramon thing is available on the site as well so if you want the evolutions that i use for those weapons uh, they are available there. Those weapons don't have grades, though, as the grading thing I'm going with with the circuit incarnans is a little specific to it. Uh, so for that, we are going to be going in order of each week that they are available. So this is the exact rotation that it will cycle through each time. So if you look at the incarnans that are currently available and you see uh, something that I have labeled as week three, that means that we are currently on the week three rotation, and you'll have to rotate the seven weeks around to get to week one and week two if you see something there that you'd like, because we are all sharing the exact same rotation uh, on the circuit each week. With that, uh, let's talk about the way that I am doing these grades, because it is a bit different than the full roster 2023. Uh, these grades are, because the circuit and Karnins are from Steel Path Circuit only, uh, with the exception of the few that you can purchase, but you can purchase them, you know, not exactly early either. Um, these weapons need to be graded a bit more harshly, and for that I have a much harsher grading scale, uh, and that is as follows, with S being the top, which is raising the bar for weapon power in Warframe significantly, A rank, meeting or slightly exceeding other high power weapons that we've had in the past, that does include the original Incarnans, which you would have access to before these, in almost all cases. Uh, and then B rank, which is powerful weapons that are held back by a downside or are niche. And then C rank, weapons that can now do high level content meaningfully better. And meaningfully better is subjective, but weapons that just now you could slog through a little better definitely don't meet this criteria. Uh, and F rank, which is no notable improvement and is maybe a stat stick. Uh, I am not giving credit to weapons that are just a stat stick for one or two Warframes, uh, as that meaning that that weapon is good. Uh, weapons that are good and are also a stat stick, it definitely helps their grade. Uh, but otherwise, if it is only a stat stick for one or two Warframes, that's you got to do a little more than that to cut it got to at least be an, an okay weapon in some capacity that's not just that in order to get somewhere now uh, i am also going to be including builds for all of these um there will i'm not gonna be showing tests and everything like that because that's just gonna bloat the video length immensely but there will be builds in these videos uh the way that we're going to do that is i'm going to go through the builds for a full week of weapons whenever i am uh talking about those weapons pretty much in sequence so some builds may be on the screen for a while, but they're all going to be in their given sections on each week because we are going in order. To start, we have week one. Uh, week one, we have the Bratton, the Lotto, the Scana, the Paris, and the Kunai. And the over-under here is that the best two weapons on here are the Bratton and the Lotto. Um, the Bratton is a very solid, minorly AoE machine gun, uh, and the Lotto has bouncing headshot ricochets. Uh, that also has the uh, Death Trap trigger, which is the... You can swap to it, and it'll get a huge bonus, which is really, really nice for high-value targets and just doing a lot of damage very quickly uh, and getting some really big damage down a hallway. And that's even good in their non-evolved versions. Both the Bratton and the Lotto do okay with the new buffs from their Incarnans, uh, even when they are not evolved into their Incarnan form, and that matters and is good. The Scana, not so much. The Scana is really, really bad um, to the point where... You might as well be swinging it completely unincarnated. Uh, I have the Scana Prime, which I would not expect anyone else to have, obviously. Um, but the Scana Prime and like it doesn't—it doesn't matter which version of the Scana you're using. They're all bad, and they, even <laughs> they're not even good as stat sticks. They are all just completely horrible. The Scana is maybe the single worst incarnate of the whole list, although it's got a little bit of competition. Um, it's real rough. 
As for the Paris, uh, the Paris gets the lowest grade besides the Skana here, and that is because the Paris has not only competitors that are also in Karnans that are just better versions of it, but also the Paris is doing kind of a bad impression uh, of the Nataruk, and you're absolutely going to have the Nataruk before you have the opportunity to get this weapon. So there's really not much reason to have it. If you like the Paris, then that's great, but you will have the Nataruk, and not only will the Nataruk not take any forma to be better than this, it won't take ever having to evolve or have to worry about ammo or just anything. The Nataruk is better in pretty much every conceivable way, uh, so it's really hard for this weapon that is so far down the line to really be super meaningful uh, to your progression, but it can do high level content meaningfully better than it could before it's like you know fairly solid you can use it it's not bad uh so it's fine uh the kunai uh has a little bit of a better time than the paris and that is because this weapon has homing headshots it has like the same kind of deal as the lotto except for the headshots start homing and then don't bounce um and these are pretty good these are not terrible their damage output leaves something to be desired and really i actually think that if this had maybe triple the incarnate ammo that i would see it completely more favorably maybe about similar to the lotto maybe a little worse um but the very very limited incarnate ammo on the kunai really does not help it at all and there's no way to change that which is quite tough so going through the builds very quickly we have the fratten build which is you know nothing too crazy here actually not too much forma invested as well uh the lotto build which i don't have a um exilus on this I don't super feel like it needs it. There are a few things you could add in there that will honestly probably not really make any difference, like less recoil and stuff like that. Um, but feel free to invest a little more if you want to, but it's already a bit of a high investment weapon in that. The Skana, which I just absolutely suggest you avoid building. Um, just just don't do it. It is it's really bad. I have it has been a long time since I've been that disappointed. It is truly awful. Uh, the Paris build, uh, this one also, uh, I don't have an Exilus on there. The Exilus that you would want to use is going to be the uh, Vigilante Ammo um, because it's going to enhance your criticals occasionally. Uh, and the ammo theoretically could be bad sometimes. It's it's almost it's almost never a problem, but that is what you would want to put in the Exilus slot if you were going to add something there. Uh, and then for the Kunai, this build, you're going to see this one a lot. Um, it is worth noting that I have Hornet Strike in here instead of the uh, Galvanized Shot mod. And the reason for that is that the upfront damage is actually really, really he helpful here on the Kunai. And I would actually just keep that there. Uh, though if you wanted to use Shot, it's not too different, but I really, really like having the upfront damage uh, from Hornet Strike and not having to have anything to build up to uh, on the start off there. Moving on. Let's talk about week two. Uh, week two, I'm just showing week three here as well, because you guys can, of course, go ahead uh, of me if you'd like to by just checking out the site. So it's you know, whatever, not going to change anything here. Um, we have the Boar, the Gamma Core, uh, the uh, Angstrom, the Gorgon, and the Anku. And of these, the Boar is definitely the one that shines. These are the ones that are also purchasable. So these are theoretically the first of the Circuit Incarnates that you could have access to. Um, overall, after their kind of second pass at making them a little stronger, I think that these are pretty good. The The boar is definitely the standout strongest one. It is like just auto-targeting beams of death um, that are going to wipe most things out, and its main fire is also not too bad being the full auto shotgun that it is. Uh, the gamma core, I do have some misgivings about gamma core at B because I think that there are a lot of benefits to it because the synoid gamma core... Uh, does have the constantly generating energy for you thing going on. Um, but the big downside is that it doesn't always proc impact on its AoE, only on its direct hits. If it was always proccing impact on its AoEs, it would be much, much better because you could take a lot more advantage of the hemorrhage mod. But because you can't do that, it really kind of defeats the purpose of the AoE. And the AoE is also not super large and is a bit on the slow side with like the uh, suck in that it has to do. Um, Overall, I think that the Gamma Core is a bit more for utility. Its main fire is like not anything super crazy to write home about. Uh, speaking of which, the Angstrom, which has no way to get through high-level armor. Uh, this is a very fun weapon where you're basically like shooting a million fireballs that bounce everywhere. But they just very simply aren't, aren't effective. They can't get through um, to high-level enemies at, at all. Like if you're bringing a armor strip Warframe, 
it's going to be great, but all of the weapons that can kill those enemies anyway are going to be insane if the enemies don't have any armor, such as the boar, for example. Uh, so kind of tough there with the angstrom being the lowest one here. It's definitely not the worst thing ever. Uh, and then the gorgon also at B. This is very similar to the gamma core. I think that the gorgon performs generally better, and that is really all thanks to hunter munitions. Having access to hunter munitions just is, you know, all primaries are going to be better than a lot of the secondaries just because they all get slash procs and they can all get through armor because of that so the gorgon is fairly good uh the changes to it were really really important changing it to full auto instead of that really annoying charge shot that it was makes all the difference in the world for its usability uh, and i think that it's overall pretty good uh not anything like super super insane but solid uh with like you know maybe some downsides here or there as compared to other weapons the Anku. So I have the Anku here at a B minus. Uh, the minus here is mostly to show that it is below my recommendations from the Gamma Core and the Gorgon. And a lot of that just has to do with it being a melee weapon. Um, melee weapons right now, they're having a tough time, as we're going to see in the next week especially. Uh, but the Anku is a scythe, which means it has a very high quality heavy attack that's always going to proc slash. And besides that, doing sp uh, spin attacks with the Anku is going to make it so all of your main attacks will also all proc slash. So there's a few different ways to build this weapon, and I think it's overall pretty good. It's one of the better melee weapons in the game at this point, uh, but it's definitely not topping the charts like the Glaive, for example. Uh, overall, fairly solid. Like, the weak has, like, a good spread. There's not anything that I'm too unhappy with, and at least the Angstrom is very fun. Um, but week two is, you know, pretty good after the changes, I would say. Moving on to the builds, we have the Boar here. We have the Asinoid Gamma Core which uh, I will say on this one in the X list, Ruinous Extension is a huge help, and I would highly suggest it. Uh, the Prisma Angstrom here, there's not much to put in the X list on this one. Uh, and then we have the Prisma Gorgon. Uh, this one I did end up investing in the Vigilante Supplies, but I would say it's not necessary. But if you want to, you can. I personally like the Gorgon, so I did. Uh, and then we have the Anku. And the Anku, it's worth noting, can still use your kind of more traditional heavy attack build, but if you're wanting to do that, there are better sizes for it. Uh, so I would probably go with something like this that's more on the uh, light attack focus to it that is still able to do very powerful heavy attacks. Moving on, uh, we have our third week, which is both so good and so bad, uh, because we start with the bow, which is just awful. So the bow is, you know, it's theoretically good. In theory, the bow could be good. Um, but the real problem is that the bow is a gigantic, huge AoE weapon that has helped in that with its evolutions that has absolutely no follow-through whatsoever. You just cannot keep damage up whenever you're hitting all those enemies, and because of that, there's kind of nothing to be done. Um, you can hit a lot of enemies and build combos super fast, and you're just never going to get damage out of it. You're just never going to get to the point where you're actually really doing damage. Um, the third evolution that you have the option to choose, which is sometimes turning impact procs into slash procs is a joke. Uh, and I really think that the bow just like needs, it needs so many things. I mean, melee weapons in general kind of need so many things right now at a lot of levels of play, except for the early game. Um, but it's, it's really tough right now. After that, though, we have the Latron. Uh, the Latron is our first S rank. The Latron is absolutely insane. Not only is it fairly easy to charge up, requiring not too many headshots in order to max out its charge, also it gets an absolute ass ton of incarnate ammo. Every single shot from this has the potential to basically clear a hallway on Steel Path with no questions asked. Not a problem. Just gone erased from this earth you are basically shooting super bouncy balls of death anywhere you want um these will vaporize acolytes just anything they come in contact with uh will no longer be in contact uh it is very very powerful it is maybe my favorite of all of the incarnates to use uh and is just excellent in every way i could not possibly say more positive things about the latron it is extremely extremely good um, and I will be using it constantly for the foreseeable future. Uh, similarly, another of my favorite of these Incarnates, which came as a huge surprise to me, is the Furus, which I'm going to put at A rank. Uh, the Furus is a little weird. Its build is a bit unconventional. And also, uh, it's worth noting that I do think I would put the Furus at S if the bugs with it are fixed. 
Uh, the important mods on the build that I use only work on half of the damage of the Furious because it's bugged so that the uh, main damage increasing, the first evolution mod, or not mod, but the first evolution uh, damage increase, that, that damage increase is not affected uh, by your galvanized shot type effects and all that stuff. So it's only doing about half the damage it should be doing. And even still, I am putting it at A. It is a very, very good weapon. Uh, the over under on what it does is it is basically a seven amp, like these the front seven 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 amp, um, which is like a big wide beam. It's not insanely long, but it does affect a good area in front of you. Um, and it is just applying every single status known to man through its arcane and then getting just gigantic damage bonuses that just burn the house down and do tons and tons of heat procs to every single enemy that you can see in the direct vicinity of in front of you. Uh, it charges extremely fast and it's just really really effective at clearing out crowds um super powerful love it a lot uh the furex however is uh terrible uh just awful like really really bad i was hoping that the slide attack would at least be inheritable by stat sticks so that you could maybe use it like with valkyrs four because she tends to be slide attack spam but even that doesn't work. Uh, there's really kind of nothing of value on the Furex. It's not even a stat stick. Uh, and its performance is more so than even a lot of others, just demonstrably exactly the same as it was before it got an Incarnan, even with its Incarnan. Uh, you will be hard-pressed to tell the difference uh, between it without and with its Incarnan because it affects basically nothing. On the complete other end of that, though, we have another S rank in this week, which is the Strun. So, this weapon is absolutely insanely powerful. Its main fire is strong enough to get through just like pretty much anything you're going to be want like you're going to want to do anyway. But once you switch into that incarnate form, you are just an air airstrike waiting to happen. You will jump into the air and just rain down death upon whatever needs death rained down upon it, uh, and it's going to evaporate everything that you see. I unironically waste a mod slot on the strun uh, so that I can do higher damage on direct hits to the targets that will need it. I have yet to find a enemy that truly needs the direct hit damage to be so much stronger. Um, but yeah, it is extremely, extremely powerful. It, just fantastic weapon. Uh, this week is really good overall, uh, just because the Latron and the Strun are pumping things up so, so much. Moving into the builds for these, uh, we're going to start on the uh, doo -doo -doo, the bow. Uh, which we have here again would not suggest using this i uh, would not suggest building this weapon at all i went through a few different builds with it and there's just there's just kind of nothing there uh the latron however i highly advise this i will say uh, i really do like stabilizer on this you don't have to go with stabilizer you could go once again with the vigilante uh ammo to enhance crits but this weapon has no ammo problems whatsoever uh and stabilizer is just a bit more comfortable for me but that's really you know do you want the 5% chance to enhance crits or, you know, maybe a little bit more comfort? It certainly doesn't need the enhanced crits. So I go with the stabilizer on this one. They're the same polarity though, so no big deal. Uh, is worth noting, in, in this case, uh, I do use serration on this to start. Uh, you could, of course, go for a Bane mod, which is almost always going to be better, but I don't like to, you know, mess around with it. And this weapon doesn't need to mess around with it, so I don't. Um, otherwise, like, it's nice to have the upfront damage on just everything that you're shooting. Uh, although I will say, if you were going to try and get this into its incarnate form at lower levels, just take the serration out and don't even bother replacing it, uh, so that you have a little bit of an easier time getting that charge in uh, before you go ham with the uh, evolved mode. Uh, but yeah, Latron, absolutely insane, absolutely incredible. The Furious, so this is going to be maybe one of the mo most different builds on here. Uh, that is mostly because we in the top right, you can see we're using secondary encumber. That is vital to the build. Uh, giving them every disease known to man and then capitalizing on that with galvanized shot uh, is kind of the whole point here. So if you're not doing it, uh, the Furious is going to be way, way worse. So make sure you are going in and doing that. Uh, the Furax, with, which again, I tried a few different things, tried a heavy attack build. Just it's You can use it, but I would, I would suggest against it. Uh, and then finally, the Strun here. Uh, on the Strun, a big note here is that Galvanized Acceleration, while not necessary, is really, really nice for the primary fire, the non incarnate form, um, but is absolutely not, you know, needed, but is extremely, extremely good. Uh, moving on, we are getting into week four 
which has some bangers for us once again. Uh, first and foremost, we have the Lex. So the Lex is getting an S grade. Uh, if that is surprising to you, that means you haven't seen someone use the Incarnate Lex yet, uh, which is fine, but I would highly suggest that you give it a look if you think it's not going to be S rank for some reason. Uh, the Lex is so strong as to be competing with things like the Latum, which is also just incredible, um, and it is just evaporating enemies. The big thing that the Lex gets is that it always procs impact, and because it always procs impact, it gets to use hemorrhage, and getting to use hemorrhage means that you get a secondary weapon with that quality of mods and the quality of stats that's on the Lex and the very nice AoE that is also going to be procking slash the vast majority of the time like primary weapons do with Hunter Munitions. That is insanely strong uh, because that consistency of slash procs means that things just don't live. You look at them and you take a picture of them dying. Like that's more so than shooting them. You really are just, you know, photographing their death when you pull the trigger. Uh, it is just completely just hallway annihilating. Like you are, you are scrubbing a ship when you fire this thing. It just gets rid of people. Uh, so yeah, it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, on the complete opposite end of that, we have the Magistar, though there are some notes with this one. I have put this into F rank, and I think more so than a lot of the other F ranks, this really, really deserves an F rank in terms of the Incarnan. The weapon that you get out of this is useful in exactly one way, in that it is a stat stick. However, there are two versions of the Magistar. There's the Sancti Magistar and then the Unnamed Nothing Magistar. And you want to put this Incarnan on the Unnamed Nothing Magistar. And the reason you want that is because the Incarnan evolution numbers are higher. And those numbers affect stat sticks like Korra and other Warframes like her. Uh, and that is truly awful. You opt to put this Incarnan on a worse weapon so that you can continue to not use it, but instead use it as a stat stick for a couple of Warframes. A truer failure, I do not know. Uh, I cannot wait for the day whenever stat sticks are no longer a thing, so they are no longer a consideration on if a weapon is good at all. If you are a Korra or Atlas enjoyer, the Magistar may be of interest to you, um, but... Anything else to do with this weapon is completely and totally fucking useless, and it is a massive disappointment that it is only good for that, uh, especially given the week that it is paired with uh, in terms of other weapons. Also in terms of other weapons, we have the Boltor, uh, which there's not really a huge amount to say about the Boltor other than it is extremely massively bugged more so than any other in Karnan. And what I mean by that is that technically, when installing this Incarnan, you should, right now, opt to install it on the Telos Boltor. I have it installed into the Boltor Prime, but the Telos Boltor has a very unique bug with Galvanized Shot. Uh, that being, you have a multiplier to damage from the Galvanized Shot interaction where you get... A multiplier to your total damage equal to the remaining magazine left in the weapon. And if that sounds stupid, it's because it is. Um, but basically, this weapon has like a hundred some odd ammo uh, that it gets in its incarnate form and its base form. And you're getting that remaining number as a multiplier that decreases as you fire. So you're getting like over a hundred times damage a lot of the time. On the Telos Boltor only, for some reason... Um, so until that bug is fixed, and it is a bug, because who knows what the fuck's making that happen, uh, the Telos Boltor is the superior version. My grade is based off of the Boltor Prime version, which is the one that is working normally, as far as I can tell, uh, and it's pretty good. It's not, like, you know, super insane or some weird 100 times damage clearly doing just real spaghetti nonsense. Uh, but it's pretty good overall. It's not bad. I enjoy it. It's solid. It's like a very rapid-fire shotgun action weapon. Uh, pretty good. Also, a shotgun, uh, the Bronco. So, the Bronco is fine. Like, really, this is doing a very similar thing to what the Lotto is doing, um, but just in kind of a lesser way because you don't get the Death Trap trigger. Um, and without that, it's fine. You know, does some bullet-bouncing stuff. You get to use dizzying rounds, do some weird status stuff. Uh, and it's overall reasonable. Moving on, we have the Ceramic Dagger, and this is why it's just so shaming the Magistar, because the Ceramic Dagger is actually a good melee weapon. This is an extremely good heavy attack melee weapon that also gets little projectiles, 
and have a bunch of bugs going on with them where they're not affected by a bunch of mods, but that's besides the point. Um, but the Ceramic Dagger is very good, procking Slash through crowds, doing very high damage, and also on top of being a solid melee weapon, it also is the best stat stick in the game for a number of different things. And that is because this gets combo based on your primary kills, um, which there's a few things that are counting as primary kills right now that aren't primaries, but even without that, having to use your primary a little bit is not going to be a problem, especially given the next week that we're looking at. Um, so getting up to 7x, 8x combo for free is really, really nice for a number of different Warframes that are going to use this as a stat stick. Uh, this is going to be really good on Atlas, Korra, Gara specifically really loves this one. Um, and it's going to be relatively similar to the Magistar, not quite quite as much of a number boost because of the things the Magistar gives you being a little bit better, getting that crit damage in specifics. Um, but the Ceramic Dagger overall is extremely, extremely powerful. So if you are a Warframe or you're, if you are playing a Warframe that doesn't naturally build combo, Korra and Atlas both kind of naturally build the combo, um, but you want to have a high combo count, a la specifically Gara is really the big one here. Uh, this is an insane stat stick, allowing and enabling the brand new Gara build that I'm I'm just hoping doesn't get nerfed. Uh very, very much. I really, I really am just hoping that it doesn't get nerfed. Uh so here's hoping that that doesn't happen. Uh but yeah, overall, uh really just like a very solid melee weapon. You can like easily kill Demolus with it. It's really nice overall. Uh and which is refreshing to have a weapon that is both a good melee and also a stat stick. That's a nice change of pace. Uh but yeah. Moving on, let's uh, check out the builds real quick. Like we have the Lex build here. Uh, I do have Steady Hands on here. Once again, I just like prefer the stability. Uh, the Magistar. Uh, and then the Magistar, it's worth noting that this build uh, is doing heavy attack stuff, which is like what the Magistar kind of wants you to do. Uh, in terms of specific stat sticks built for Korra or Atlas, you're going to have to uh, check out those specific videos for those specific Warframes. Uh, the Boltor. We have this build here, which is what I gravitated towards. Aptitude actually performs really nicely on here, which was a bit unexpected for me. I thought this was going to kind of need the initial like run up of having serration installed on it, but it really doesn't. Uh, performs just fine with aptitude on there. Uh, Bronco, uh, this uses dizzying rounds. Uh, you can just uh, kind of you know you know go like more classic with this uh, if you like feel the need to, but I did not feel the need to do such a thing. Uh, just hemorrhage with dizzying rounds and stuff actually turned out to be really really powerful. Uh, and Cascadia Flare actually uh, performs very nicely here as well, which is kind of like the pure heat impact hemorrhage stuff going on with it. It's actually much better than I thought it would be. Uh, and then the Ceramic Dagger, we actually have two builds that I wanted to show off. Uh, the Ceramic Dagger uh, is this build here. This is just generally what I use for heavy attacks and such, and just like kind of just using it more generically. Uh, and then this is the Crit Stick build. Uh, if you're looking for the Raw Stick build, which is specifically for Gara, that is in Gara's video, so I would highly suggest you go check that out separately. Uh, but those are the two builds for the Ceramic Dagger. Uh, this one is the one that you would want to bring on, like, an Atlas, for example. Moving on to our next week, we have, I think, arguably, and, you know, not even really arguably, this is the best week for all of the Incarnans. Week 5 is absolutely crazy. Starting off with, actually, probably the Torrid should be S+. I think that the Torrid Incarnan is the best incarnate and maybe the single best primary weapon in the game the torrid is nuts the torrid is eliminating zip codes from this world and it is so easy to charge you don't have to get headshots with this incarnate you just have to hit things directly and it charges so extremely fast and when you evolve it the ammo lasts ages and it just vaporizes anything you look at you look at a like doorway with three guys that you can see you left click with the torrid and in less than one second you have killed nine guys the three guys you could see and six guys that are somewhere else maybe they're down a hallway maybe they were behind you more people than you can see are normally dying to the torrid at very regular intervals this weapon is eliminating all life post haste and it is extremely impressive it is extremely easy to use and it is extremely extremely powerful if you get to this week pick up the torrid and then one of the other ones because the torrid is just crazy moving on we have the dual toxicist now the dual toxicist i think this is the one that people are going to be mad i did not put an s but i think that the dual toxicist has a few too many downsides 
Uh, that namely being that this weapon, more so than any other incarnate almost, needs those headshots really badly. Because not only do you need to get the charge up for the incarnate, you also need to activate its... Um, it's special ability that gives you more damage and also gives you enough fire rate to really get by. Now, you don't need that fire rate in its incarnate form, but in order to charge to its incarnate form, it really is required that you hit headshots and you hit them, like, right away. Like, there's very little forgiveness on the dual tox assist, and it can be a little annoying to use at times. And this weapon, if you are fighting something that doesn't have a head or the head is really annoying to hit, you are going to waste so much time getting this thing charged up. Um... It can just be a really big pain, and that is really the reason I've knocked it down from S to A+, which should say a lot about just how strong this weapon is if you are using it properly uh, and getting those headshots, and you're in the incarnate form very often. This is a rapid-fire machine gun. You're going to fire down a hallway and just, you know, completely shred everything that exists. Just put holes in everything just as far as the eye can see. Uh, just full rapid-fire, just death in just the whole everything you're looking at will be swiss cheese the moment you look at it uh and it does quite a lot of damage i will say i do use the ads mods on it and i think that those are really nice for the consistency um but yeah the dual tox assist pretty good uh but just a few hitches here and there knock it out of s rank for me personally uh coming up next we have the dual icker uh this is actually the melee weapon that probably most surprised me uh, I think there's some argument for at least making this maybe like a B plus, but I ended up not doing it. Um, these are really nice. They have like a gas cloud effect that they kind of just like spread and kill a bunch of enemies with that, uh, which is very effective, especially at like lower end seal path. Um, and also if you're just like, you know, if you're playing regular path and it's going to be incredible for killing a ton of enemies. Uh, but yeah, these just ended up being really good. Their build looks a little weird and I think they kind of have to use a Bane mod. You're pretty much forced into it because you're using gas procs and double dipping on that stuff to get really big damage multipliers. Uh, but, you know, that being the case, I do think that these are overall pretty good, and they're actually, you know, kind of a unique melee weapon, which the vast majority of the melee weapons uh, on the Incarnates are very much not unique in any real way. Uh, these actually kind of accomplish the uh, the Incarnate goal of making a weapon both different and better, uh, which I think is really nice. That being said, it's in a really tough week because next we get to talk about the Miter. So the Miter has a lot of advantages. Namely, not only is it insanely good and can compete with the other S rank weapons, it also has an augment that makes you instantly no longer give a shit that nullifiers exist because its augment gets rid of nullifier bubbles um, just kind of by accident, really, like not even really doing it on purpose. A lot of the time, Nellifier Bubbles will just cease to be, and then everything that was there will just be dead. Uh, firing these saw blades, but you do have to fire at head level whenever you're charging up the Incarnate, uh, but the charge up is very fast on the Incarnate, and while the Incarnate ammo is a little bit more restricted on the Miter, uh, I think that overall it has less downsides than the Dual Toxicist, and generally performs better, especially considering uh, we are dedicating a whole mod slot just to anti-Nellifier tech. Uh, Miter... Overall, just extremely powerful, just room clearer, just absolute destructive energy, uh, and just really good against pretty much anything, especially if you're, you know, going into a thing where you just hate nullifiers, then the miter is a fantastic thing to be bringing with you, uh, because it also hates nullifiers. Then finally for this week, uh, the Atomos, which I kind of agonized over putting an S, um, this was one that really felt like it could be an S, but I think that its incarnate form is just a little bit weaker than I'd like, and it's a little bit harder than I'd like it to charge in order to put in into S rank. Um, it's just got a little bit, just like on both edges, it's just a little wavery in terms of the speed at which it can do those things uh, and the power that its incarnate really provides with its incarnate being kind of like a flip-flop from its main fire, where it, like each one is good for different things, which also, of course, does have its benefits. Um, but the Atomos' main fire, basically you're getting a new core, like essentially like the Atomos is like the granddaddy of the new core. It's like the impetus for like that meta weapon that we now have today. Um, but this brings it up to be basically another one of like the Kuva new core level weapons for its main fire. And then whenever you get into its alt fire, you just get extremely high damage. Uh, just Acolyte Evaporator, just Mega Man Buster explosions, just killing everybody. Uh, and it's extremely, extremely good. But the charge is probably the most questionable thing. And the damage uh, and, like, the ammo capacity on the Incarnate are just a little bit less than, I'd say, 
uh, can push it over the edge into S rank. It is extremely good, and I enjoy it quite a lot, though. Now, to quickly go over all of the builds for those, starting with the Torrid, extremely powerful. I would highly suggest doing the additional investment of adding Vigilante Supplies here, mostly because it's funny and not because it's needed. Uh, dual Tox Assist uh, on this one, I have not opted to do the Exilus. I probably would do Recoil, though, on the Exilus, honestly. Uh, and then Dual Icker. This one's more of, like, actually one of the weirder builds on here, um, using, like, Weeping Wounds and, like, Smite Corrupted, which I normally wouldn't opt for, but this weapon kind of needs it to get where it wants to go. Uh, and then the Miter, of course, using its Neutralizing Justice. This one, in terms of the Exilus, you could put the Vigilante um, ammo mod in there if you really wanted to, but it doesn't need it, and it never has ammo problems, at least in my experience. Uh, and then finally, the Atamos. The Atamos, again, Ruinous Extension, because this is a beam weapon, is extremely helpful. Though, in some cases, you may want to put ammo mutation on it if you just want to hold left trigger and then never think about it ever again, or left click, rather. Um, but yeah, very, very solid overall. All excellent weapons this week. Very solid and hard to go wrong, which can be a problem for picking something this week. But uh, if you're just going to go purely based on performance, I think that, you know, the picks are you pick up the Torrid, you pick up the Miter, and then the next go around, you pick up the Toxicist and the Atomos, uh, and then finally grab the Icker going around last. Although, I will say there is a strong argument for picking up a primary and a secondary, and then a primary and a secondary. So if you want to grab, like, the Torrid and the Atomos week one, and then the Miter and the Toxicist week two, you can maybe have a slightly easier time getting those evolved. So maybe that is a consideration for uh not picking double primary and then double secondary so that's just something to think about uh moving on we have our week six so week six is pretty weak uh we are starting out with the ack and the brunt which is just <laughs> it's just not great um it is a sword and shield that has an incarnate evolution that is still worse than silva and aegis prime which is that's rough, buddy. Like, I, yeah, wow. It's it's tough out there. Uh, this thing basically gets, like, no special properties. It gets slightly better stats, and then that's kind of it. Like, it kind of, you know, there's kind of nothing special going on with it. Like, its shield throw gets, like, a little something, but it's just not impressive, and it's just generally pretty sad. Uh, so very much would not suggest doing anything with the Ack and the Brunt. Uh, and then after that, we have the Soma. The Soma also was a big disappointment uh overall just because it's incarnate form just isn't very good and it working with its special augment and stuff now uh doesn't really move the needle uh on it like the improvements that were made to this just kind of didn't change much and i think that there was a chance that before the improvements that it got that i might have given the soma an f um because it just really doesn't do a whole lot for it it's very very disappointing overall uh, but it is, it is a little better now. Like C rank is the best I can do. Unfortunately, I would have really loved to see an excellent Soma again. Uh, but I guess it's just not its time again. Uh, moving on, we have the Vasto, the Vasto. I'm giving a B rank. Uh, this is an excellent weapon in a niche scenarios specifically. Uh, basically the over under on this is that this has the death trap trigger. And also it is a, a six shot quick fire. So, uh, on targets like acolytes, this is the acolyte deleter. If you also add punch through uh, to this weapon, it also will delete hallways, though that is a bit of a hitchier way to use it. Uh, the most notable thing about the Vasto is that it does not have as much incarnate ammo as you want. Um, the especially weird thing about the Vasto is that it is, you know, it's a six shooter revolver um, and it has like, you know, the fan, the hammer, which you get to do five times in the incarnate form. And it's it, it just feels a bit strange that that's not at least six. Uh, of course, I would have loved to see something like 12, considering how restricted the Incarnate Ammo feels on the Vasto, but it not being at least 6 feels very, very weird. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, I really like it for like eliminating high-value targets like Liches uh, and enemies like that. It is quite good at those jobs, uh, but just a bit restricted in a lot of different ways, in very strange ways, too. Uh, moving on, we have the Nami Solo. So the Nami Solo... This is one that I'm going to talk about that is a bit odd. This one's kind of hinging on one of its evolutions that is unclear uh, because it says it has an evolution that increases fall off by 60%, which is some words. Um, there's no stat called fall off on melee weapons. They have follow through, which 
uh, by my testing with the NAMI solo and looking at some numbers and stuff, it seems like it is increasing follow through from the 0.7 follow through that the NAMI solo has by default uh, up to one or maybe slightly above one. I think it's only capped at one though, or at least it seems to be. Uh, and some of the higher numbers I was seeing in past testing for anyone who was there for the stream, I think that's just because of viral damage. Um, but yeah, so it basically the over under is that the Nami solo is a machete, which means you can proc a lot of slash procs with the heavy attacks and having a follow through of one makes this extremely effective on groups because every single enemy is getting the full amount of your damage, uh, which is really good. Uh, using the Nami solo like this has actually made me just want them to remove follow through as a stat and make follow through one on all melee weapons just to see what happens. Maybe things would be better um, than they are now for melee, which is kind of having a tough time at higher levels. Uh, but the Nami solo, as long as that evolution is, is supposed to do that, I think is a C rank. If that evolution is not supposed to do that and is supposed to do something way shittier, like the only other thing I can think fall off of doing uh, is making it so slam attacks have better fall off damage, which would be completely fucking useless. Uh, if that's what that evolution is supposed to do and it's just not doing that right now, um, that will immediately slam Dunk the Nami solo into F rank. Uh, and it will be basically nothing uh, and just like mostly useless other than like, you know, you, you'd, you'd rather use a Zaw. You'd rather use a Machete Zaw uh, than the Nami Zaw. No, I'm not. Uh, uh, excuse me. Then the Nami solo at that point. Uh, editors, I'm not going to cut that. I can feel it in my soul. Uh, and then moving on to our last one here, we have the Burstin. Uh, the Burstin is the best of the bunch here. Uh, the Burstin is really, really strong. It has the incarnate form that you would have thought the Soma was getting. Uh, which is a gigantic magazine to just absolutely tear through enemies. It's basically the enhanced version of what the Bratton got. Um, it is just an absolute saw blade of bullets uh, that can just swipe through hallways and just eliminate everything. And it has a ton of ammo to go through. Uh, it is very, very strange. But if you were wanting an Incarnan Soma, the thing you actually want is the burst in Incarnan. The Burstin Incarnan pretty much does exactly what you were almost certainly probably looking for whenever you thought about what the Soma could be as an Incarnan weapon. The Burstin is that, so I would suggest going uh, with that one. Uh, moving on, let's talk about the builds real quick. The Acton Brunt is here. Again, I would not suggest using this. Uh, the Soma, we've got this. I'm using the Hadasaya build. There are a few things that you can try, but they all perform relatively close together. Hadasaya is at least a little bit more fun. The Vasto, uh, which for this one, it's worth noting, Steady Hands. This thing kicks like a mule. If you're not using steady hands, um, it is going to be a little tough to control in some cases. Uh, that being said, with steady hands, it's basically a laser beam. So those are your, your choices. If you like the kick, then you're going to keep the kick. Otherwise, it's going to kick. Uh, and then we have the Nami Solo, which is this is just what I ended up on uh, for the Nami Solo, doing like a lot of lighter attacks and stuff, uh, and then just like going into heavy attacks from there. You can, of course, just do a regular all heavy attacks build, and that works pretty well also. Uh, and then the burst and build, which I do opt for, like the full vigilante supplies on, never has ammo problems. But like, you know, when you got the extra slots, you might as well use them, right? Uh, and then moving on, we are getting into our last week. The last week is also quite weak, unfortunately. Starting with the Zylock. So the Zylock I have at a C rank. Um, this one is severely bugged. Uh, I have it at a tentative and optimistic C rank. Um, there's a bunch of stuff on it that just doesn't work right now there's a bunch of mods that do not function correctly like multi-shot and just like a bunch of things like some stuff got fixed but not all of it uh Zylock prime is about to happen i have this on the regular Zylock right now uh i would not easily suggest you take the Zylock right now if the bugs get fixed with it and stuff it'll probably be okay and actually be at about this c rank uh and maybe with the prime it'll get a little better especially if maybe the prime has a special mechanic attached to it um, but overall, it's a, it's a pretty rough one. It can kind of do some stuff, but it's I probably should have a minus on this C, actually. So if you guys see that on the, the site whenever it goes live, uh, that's that's probably what's happened there. It might, it might deserve a C right now, or C minus right now at the very least. Uh, and then maybe when we get that prime, the bugs with the Incarnate will be fixed. We can hope so. Uh, and then we have the Sibair, uh, which is just a horrible, horrible disappointment. This weapon is absolute dog shit. Um, it's bad. It wants you to do heavy attacks that just don't do anything to enemies. It doesn't proc slash on heavy attacks, and we all know that that makes melee weapons bad, generally, uh, at higher levels as it stands right now. Uh, and then we have the entire, uh, suite of the Stalker weapons, which the Dread is, once again, uh, better than the Paris, 
at being an impression of the Nataruk, but worse than the Nataruk at being the Nataruk. So, Nataruk, which you are definitely already going to have, takes way less forma and is way better than this weapon, but it's fine. Um, it's pretty good. It's better than the Paris performs. It's very slash forward, uh, and it's it's nice. It's not anything insane crazy to write home about that I would put it in A rank, but it's good. Uh, the Despair, much better than a lot of the other, like, Kunai that we have, like, very up there. Like, it's up there with, like, the Egret and stuff like that. It's about on the equivalent side. Uh, again, the Despair struggles like its other Kunai compatriot and also, like, the Vasto and weapons like that, where it just doesn't get enough Incarnate ammo. It really should have a lot more Incarnate ammo than it does. Uh, I do think that if the Incarnate ammo for the Despair was doubled, it probably would be an A rank for me because I think that it's pretty good. Uh, but it really has a tough time because it just doesn't get to use its Incarnate form for even close to long enough. Uh, and that's really more so than anything else that's putting it down into the B rank. Uh, and then Hate, which I have at B+. Plus. Uh, Hate was already a good melee weapon. It was already like one of the best scythes in the game. It was a side grade to Reaper Prime. Now, with its Incarnate, it is an increase over Reaper Prime, making it the best scythe in the game. Um, that being said, the Incarnate Evolutions have very little to do with that. Like, it gets like, you know, you evolve it and it gets these little scythe things that come out whenever you light attack, but like, you're not really probably going to be light attacking with this thing. Um, and like, you're pretty much going to use it for heavy attacking and just instant killing things that you heavy attack with it, uh, as is the classic thing you would do with Reaper Prime and Hate. Um, so things stay pretty similar to what it was already happening for Hate. Uh, I really don't think that it's like, you know, even coming close to like pushing the power up. And because the Hate really more so than anything stayed mostly the same, I do think that B plus is maybe even a little generous uh, because the Incarnate didn't move the needle too much, just that the Hate was already quite good. Uh, but yeah, that's what's up with all of the Circuit Incarnans. Uh, thank you all for hanging out for this video. Uh, and checking out and talking about all the Incarnates. What do you think I've graded wrong? Because I know those those comments are coming in. We're going to have to fight. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, good stuff. I think that the Incarnates overall for the game uh, are just really nice. I really like them overall. I do think that melee has to be figured out a bit more. Because you'll notice, if you look at all of the grades that I've given here, um, it's... Uh, it's really the melees that really bring things down, and a lot of our regular guns are quite good. Oh, also, right, sorry, right at the end here, just to go over, uh, we have the Zylock build, um, which, again, I would not suggest even trying until Zylock Prime. The Sibair, which, again, just avoid at all costs. Oh, God, it's so horrible. Uh, the Dread, which is pretty solid. Uh, the Despairs, which I like quite a lot, but really need more ammo. Uh, and then the Hate, which is remaining pretty much the same as it ever was, uh, and just, you know, doing your usual things. But, yeah. Pretty happy with how this all came together. Uh, if you guys have any feedback on like this page and if anything could be made more clear, any wording on that, I would love to hear about that in the comments as well, as making the site better is, of course, a nice goal. Uh, thank you all to the patrons and everybody supporting and helping me work on the site and everything. Hopefully you are enjoying it as much as I am enjoying having things on it done, and hopefully you've enjoyed this video as well. I will see you tomorrow. All right, welcome to October, everyone. We have some big updates coming, so expect me to be going over them. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, thank you very much to all of the super patrons Alex Parnum, Arbiter Daydream, Nuvin, Lotomatic, Brandon Coggin, Brutus Salazar, Dylan Dworsky, Ethrain, Fawn, IQ is Thick, James Harsthorn, JC4 Science, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Lou Xanth, Mikakel. Uh, Minty Ginja, Mitchta, Nerve, Remoxidate, Tamarillig Wastelander, The Coupon of Death, uh, Tome Worm, Waifu War, Zack Zaner, and Xerophir. And of course, thank you to all of the $5 patrons as well. It is extremely appreciated for the support. Uh, but yeah, we have huge reworks coming this month. I'm definitely going to be making a bunch of content around those and expect the next free to play through to be starting relatively soon. We are going to be starting that before the end of this year for sure. Uh, should be a really exciting time. Uh, and thanks for the patience while I've been sick. I appreciate it, everybody.